Uh, Josh Green here for Tungsten Tales. Delighted to be joined by Steve Brown, uh, director and owner of the JDC, of course, former tour card holder. You're a man of many talents, Steve. How are you doing? Not too bad, buddy. I've never been described as a man of many talents before, but yeah, no, really good, thanks. Good, good. Um, we'll start off with the JDC. It's been a, a big couple of years over there. We've seen some great players come through and more and more players seem to be joining the PDC tour full-time. But um, JDC Q School over the weekend, just talk us through what we saw over in Coventry. Yeah, I mean, for us, it was a, a record-breaking weekend at Q School. Um, I mean, last year we were getting, we sort of had a feeling that it might be good this year in terms of entries. Last year, we were getting over 100 players on the Foundation Tour, which is obviously our second tier. The Advanced Tour is the top tier with 32 players in it. Um, just I think the the kids that are coming out of the out of these academy structures now, having the confidence to play on the Foundation Tour, because it is separated from the elite players, gives them an opportunity to go and express themselves and perhaps not feel intimidated. So, yeah, I mean, the Q School, I mean, to have over 80 entries, I think it was 88 in the end, um, for us is groundbreaking and just shows the appetite for the game at junior level. Yeah, and those numbers, obviously, I was involved many years ago. Now it's four or five years ago when, when I was involved and the numbers were good then, but I think what we see now is just the professionalism of it go to another level and the, the sort of the step between the JDC development tour and obviously then the pro tour is just preparing them for that, isn't it? Yeah, I certainly think as well. I think that the the standards from the, our advanced tour to the development tour, it's quite a smooth transition. It's not a big jump anymore. Um, mm. So yeah, it's, it's definitely catching up um, with the development tour. And I think there's not a lot, run an average wise, I think there's probably sort of four or five points in it, which you know sounds a lot, but it's not really, when you, you know, in terms of that's probably maybe a dart um, in the leg. So but yeah, I mean, it's... um. Yeah, the, the standards definitely grow. And I think our free tiered approach is helping feed the foundation tour as well. We have the, the green zone tour now, which is for juniors really for me, just sort of six to ten, I'd say. Yeah. Um playing on the green zone dartboard on the green zone handicap system, giving them competition at an early stage as well. So that's sort of they play two or three years in that. That gives them the competition and uh, sorry, the, the confidence then to go play on the on the foundation tour, which ultimately ends up with them playing on the on the advanced tour. Was it important to implement that kind of structure? Because I think initially, if you had a, a player of eight, nine years of age coming up against the big boys who would now be the likes, I don't know, Leighton Bennett when he was when he was sort of winning every other week and Luke Littler as well, it's it doesn't do them any good, does it? No, not at all. But I think you're probably seeing that a little bit with the women's game as well. And you've got Bo and Fallon at the moment sort of running away with it. There's a big gap that needs to fill in. It does take four or five years to happen and it will eventually. And the same has happened with, you know, with the junior darts and, you know, we've got sort of I say the bigger names, I suppose, that you just mentioned, but there's so many kids coming through now. And you know, just got to look at the standard at Q School this week. And these, these are guys that haven't yet got an advanced tour card and hitting 95 averages and 90 averages. It's just incredible. Mm. And we saw over the weekend, well, Caden Anderson, it's not just the UK names. We've got players coming over from the US in Caden's um, in Caden's case. And then obviously you've got the UQ school as well. It's not just something that's servicing the UK. It's it's worldwide now, isn't it? Yeah, and that's something we're really sort of pleased with as well. I mean, we've, we've teamed up with the NDB um, and they're going to be helping us host the European Q school for, for the um, JDC, which is groundbreaking in itself. You know, it's probably the first time we've worked alongside a WDF body. Um, and I think for us and for them, I think it's going to be, you know, um, an important moment and hopefully sort of the, the way forward. Hmm. Let's talk about Luke Littler, a man that's, well, a boy that's been on the, the JDC tour for the last couple of years and just step by step he's got better and better he's obviously played in the the wdf world championships he's won titles in so many youth organizations including now the reigning jdc world champion um where is he in his development and how good can he be can he be um i guess i sort of first heard about Luke probably three four years ago um he sort of burst on the scene and you, you get it with, with the youngsters they sort of come on in I, didn't, I try not to get too excited by them because, you know, they, everyone peaks at different times. Um, but Luke's just been steady. It's all the way through. He's, he's progressed. And not many, not, not often people or players or even youngsters do that in their, in their sort of um, in their progress. But Luke seems to be, the, you know, an exception to that rule. He is just constantly getting better and better. I've not seen him dip, I don't think, in three or four years. So, um, you know, the longer it takes for you to get there, the longer you'll stay there, is my motto. Um, but he just, you know, he's just been so consistent over the last three or four years that, you know, I think he's just going to continue to rise. Yeah, and as well, qualifying for the UK Open over the weekend, that's sort of a first 
foray into the PDC sort of senior tour, I guess, for Luke. It's going to be a terrific experience for him. And I'm sure he'll go there with you know, real expectation. He'll want to win games, but a tournament like that, the expectation, there's no pressure on his shoulders. No, I think there's always been an argument, you know, that um, a few years back that Leighton Bennett was good enough to play in the um, in the Grand Slam. And I think he was, I think he's been considered. Uh, yeah. I don't, you know, I think the right decision was made at the time because I don't think um, Leighton was mature enough as a player. He was certainly good enough, but not mature enough. And, you know, going on that stage, if things go wrong, you might get booed. And how's that going to affect your confidence? And because the, the crowd are pretty unforgiving. But I think in Luke's case, you know, he's just turned 16, but he's so, so mature as a player and, and as a per- young man. That, um, I think I think he's ready. Yeah, let's talk about Q School. We saw a couple of names uh, from the JDC's past come through. Owen Rulofs was was one of them, former champion over in the JDC. Played on that in that Dutch team. I was speaking to Owen the other day. That Dutch JDC World Cup team. Danny Janssen played in the JDC World Cup. Owen Rulofs. Um, who else was there? Dan Bastiansen was at Q School and made it to the final stage. Uh, Jürgen van der Velde's on the pro tour now. It shows the progression, doesn't it? Yeah, it does you know? Of course, let's not forget that, that a lot of their work was done in their in their home country, and the NDB had done a great job. And you know, we just give them a a world platform to play on. But um, it's great to see them come through our system. And you know, even if they spend just a short time with us, it's great to sort of um say that we we are part of their uh, of their story. Yeah, and there's many names on that tour now. Obviously, Keen Barry. Um, Rusty as well. There's you look yeah, along that Louis tour Williams. And... Um, there's a, yeah, there's a few. Yeah, yeah. It's... See, John's just come off the tour, but yeah, it's, um, yeah. There's, I think there's probably nine or ten kids now that have sort of touched the JDC and come through and yeah. played at our championships that are they're on the tour. So, you know, at the very start when we had this conversation with the PDC, that you know, what we you know, it was obvious that eventually kids were going to end up on the tour. But for us, it was just you know when we when they are sort of around us and with us that that we you know we we give them these the, the opportunities to speak. To guys like you and media interviews, and so when they get there, they're not a, a, a rabbit in the headlights. They're they're used mm-hmm. to the attention. They're used to being put a microphone in front of their face, and just by being well rounded, by the time they get to the PDC, that they're ready to go. You know. Yeah, how pleasing is it for you to see all the hard work starting to pay off? Because that's really what what it is now, isn't it? Yeah, that was the drive in, in in the first place. That you know, for me, it was it was been a passion of mine since you know two thousand eight, two thousand and nine. That um, when I when I was a kid, the story goes, I, I used to play darts and I played because my dad played and, you know, that was typically how you would play, got into mm. uh, the darts. But um, my passion was that when I used to play darts as a kid, I was embarrassed to tell my friends I played darts. It was like an old man sport. Mm. So when it came along that I started the academies, um, I really wanted to be bright um, and the kids to express themselves, not necessarily have to wear trousers everywhere they went in black shoes. And, and for me, it was just about trying to change people's perspective or certainly youngsters anyway. And sort of encourage them to play sport, and you know, and the fact that darts has become so fashionable now, um, that the kids that play darts at school are now the popular kids. So for me, that was sort of that's the biggest, most rewarding thing is that you know that the, over the last decade, that people, um, the youngsters that play darts are aren't sort of laughed at anymore. Mm, that's that's a really really good story. Um, mm. Let's talk about the ADC and the changes we've seen there. Obviously the. It went from Mad Darts over to ADC, and we're now saying seeing things like the Vol. It's another option for amateur players, and the options for amateur players and players outside the one two eight are, are huge now, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many routes you can you can go through now, and again, you know, the the, the reason behind Mad and now ADC was that you know obviously the BDO at the time had hit the wall, um, and I looked around and I just thought there's not many forward thinking people here. Mm. And I'm encouraging people at the age of six, seven, eight years old to, to take up the sport of darts. And there's only limited space at the top table um, of the PDC. So uh, where are they going to apply their trade? How can I, I wasn't convinced that I was getting these people to take up the sport that had a future. Um, so that's where, you know, I like to think probably 15, 20 years ahead of now. And um, the kids, we're up against, as an industry, we're up against so many challenges. You know, Netflix and your Playstations and the kids' attention spans are pretty small. And adults, you know, these, these youngsters and millennials now are or sort of taking up darts. If they're not interested, and we can't keep them interested after a couple of months, they'll just walk away from the sport. So for me, we want to come up with a, um, an organisation that was dynamic, fast moving, and you know, uh, you know, software led. So that's where we are. That's good. Um, just moving on to yourself. Obviously, you had your your tour card just over oh, just over a year ago. Now it was for those couple of years. Um, you said, I think, when you when you initially got your card there, it wasn't it wasn't expected. But what were those two years like for yourself? And did you get out of it what you expected? 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it was, uh, I suppose for me, it was a, I, as from a personal level, as a player, you know, if I was looking at it from a player, then it was, you know, it wasn't very productive at all. But I'm just so grateful that I got to spend a year on a tour with John on John's first year mm-hmm. and sort of see him through. Um, I think it was a bit of a distraction for myself, if I'm honest. But um, I, I, I don't mind that at all. Um, and it, yeah, just a blessing, really. I mean, it's something that, you know, there's lots of fathers and sons that played arts, but to say that you've played on the on the tour with your son for a year, it was amazing. You know, it was, you know I'm really grateful for that. Mm. Do you still have aspirations to to play PDC darts and play top level darts? I, I've been my life is at the moment. I don't think, um, you know, realistically, I've, I've built, built a life for myself that will probably not allow me to do that anymore. Just, I'm just, mm. I just always, you know, I, I don't stop. I'm working probably 16, 17 hours a day. My, my mind never switches off. So to have time to sort of um, practice and dedicate myself to it, um, you know, I'm more passionate these days about running events and, and pushing pushing the sport forward than, um, than playing myself. And when you look on at Q School and what's gone there, I bet you're thankful that you weren't uh, you weren't down in Milton Keynes at, at Q School. Yeah, I mean, they're, they were long, grueling days. And yeah, I just don't think I, I don't think I have the stamina or the will these days. But I said, I'm still playing to a decent standard and looking forward to playing at Modus in a few weeks. And um, obviously, we're doing the ADC tours and playing in the Volks week in, week out. But I said, that's sort of as a hobby for me. It wouldn't be dedicate myself to much practice. I just will be playing as I turn up. But um, again, yeah, I'm playing with a decent standard, but getting a tour car was a possibility for me. But um, to being competitive on the tour and not being miserable for two years was uh, <laughs> was likely. Um, and John as well, obviously, he's now not not got his tour card, but what were the experience, what has it done for John? And is he keen to get back there? What was, what was his experience like? Yeah, I think John learned a lot during the two years. I mean, he started well, really well. He mm. made a few mistakes and um, I think he thought he nailed it after four or five months. He'd done really well at UK Open. He was taking some big names and earning some decent money. And then all of a sudden, you know, I think as youngsters do, I think he took us off the ball a little bit, stopped practising. And then his confidence took a dip. Um, but I think he learned a lot about himself, a lot about darts, a lot about who his real friends are as well along the way, um, which, I, you know, warned him of the pitfalls. But again, you know, I've been telling them what to do for the last 21 years. <laughs> Sometimes it just takes a different voice to um uh, for it to, to sink in. And but no, I think for John, you know, we made a decision as a family that he's gonna he's got a young baby on the way, so he didn't go to Q score this year. He's gonna mm-hmm. concentrate on on being the best that he can for a year and then um and just get his confidence back really on the amateur circuit and, and giving it a good game next year. Yeah, sometimes that's the key, isn't it? Take a bit of a breather and come back when you're when you're in a better place, you're playing better darts and you're in better mental space as well. Yeah, no, he's been starting to play the bolts and stuff in the last few weeks, and you know, he his his um his ability is is scary. It's just his, you know, it's just his mental side that he has to work on, and once he gets that figured out, then he will be back. Perfect. Well, yeah, thank you very much for joining me today, Steve. We look forward to what the JDC has to offer in twenty twenty three, and hopefully, we'll see you around soon. Pleasure, Josh. Thanks a lot.